Good morning from Beijing Airport now. I've got my passport here and my ticket in hand, which can only mean we're heading off somewhere now. At the moment, it's summer in Beijing, so every day it's been above 35 degrees, hot, humid and really sticky. But we're about to head somewhere we can escape all of that comparative paradise and I can't wait. Hi, I'm Katrina Yu. Welcome to Travel Again. Let's get going. We're heading to China's cooler northeast to Chiang Mai Mountain or Chiang Mai Shan in Jilin Province. It's a short, less than two hour flight from Beijing. And as we descend, the landscape looks noticeably different. Ah, well, we've just arrived at Chiang Mai Shan Airport and it's such a pleasure to come from the city and see all these trees surrounding us. But you know, the best thing about being here is that smell, that crisp, cool and fresh air. I was a little tired before, but now I feel completely revitalized. Chiang Mai Shan is the most famous mountain in this region and is actually a dormant volcano. It's a top rated nature reserve, lush and overflowing with all sorts of wildlife. Many hotels strive to bring Chiang Mai Shan's refreshing environment indoors and we pay a visit to one of them. The lobby's lavish decoration is inspired by the beauty of the forest. And it's not just the lobby. It's uh, one of uh, the most unique rooms in, uh, in our properties. And as you can see, the decoration is very special, mm. made of uh, wooden, which gives the, the warm touch of this uh, Yeah, It's very cozy. Yes, and it, there is. it is. And the smell is, is such a great smell as well. Heavy as well because of the amenities, also the decoration matching the rest. Mm -hmm. Wooden, uh, part of the ski resort, make it very special as well. That sort of warm yeah. kind of feeling. It does get quite cold here in winter. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, yes. After you. Thank you said a little cold, but during the winter, temperatures drop below minus 20 degrees Celsius. No wonder it's a famous ski destination. In the summer, however, it's a pleasant 22 degrees or so, and the conditions are perfect for our first stop. So we've just arrived at the north gate of the Chiang Mai Shan Reserve and we're going to meet a very good friend of mine. Her name is Wang Mang, she's a local journalist. And luckily enough, she's agreed to help show us around this area. So let's go meet her. Hi, Hi. Katrina! Hello! Welcome! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Wang Mang is taking us to see Tian Chi, which literally means heavenly lake. But first, a van ride to the top. And it's a little crazy in a good way. Don't forget to take in the stunning view while you're holding tight. At an altitude of more than 2,000 meters, the cloud is so thick, we can barely see the paths in front of us. As for Tian Chi, well... Okay, so here's Tian Chi. Just kidding, we're going to have to wait a little bit more just for the clouds to clear. So Wang Mang just told me a lot of the rocks here you can see is, is from this volcanic material. So this is full of little air holes and in fact if you were to throw this into the river it would float. It's really light. After a while we get a little impatient and try to blow the mist away. But soon... <gasps> you can see slowly the, the mist emerging from the lake and, and the burning blue just appearing underneath it. It's such a stunning thing and to hear the excitement of all the people after waiting for that cloud to clear, I think we all feel very, very lucky. <laughs> You do feel really lucky coming here and actually getting 
to see temperatures, knowing that so many people do come several times and see nothing but cloud, we, we really are fortunate. And you really get that sense that this, you understand why this is such a sacred place when the, the lake reveals itself. It's almost like it chooses to reveal itself to you. It chooses you to show itself to you. Feeling accomplished, we head from the summit down to the valley to a place Wang Meng says visitors cannot miss, the underground forest. Chiang Bai Shan last erupted in 1702, and now devastation has given way to an explosion of vegetation. Have a look at this. When I first saw these sort of what looked like platforms of concrete, I thought, oh, they're man-made or leftovers from some building or something. But actually, these platforms of stone are completely natural. They're, they're left over from the last volcanic eruption. And it seems remarkable that trees are actually growing from these pieces of stone. But what happened is that this moss wrapped itself around the tree and then the nutrients came. And eventually, after hundreds of years, the trees were, were able to grow out of it. Pretty cool. Chiang Bai Shan is a treasure trove of diverse plant life and considered an international biosphere. Surprisingly, the hot springs are useful for other things too. For example, boiling your breakfast. Okay. Oh, wow. It's really, really, really quite soft boiled. I think it's almost falling off. Mm. Okay, let's give it a go. Mmm. Mom, you don't even need to bite it. You just have to sort of suck it. It's like a very soft tofu. 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 It's like a you can buy three boiled eggs for about 10 kwai. They'll give you all the energy you'll need to take in the view ahead. Katrina, look at the side. That's the Chiang Mai Pupu. It's the world's highest mountain peak. With a 68 meter drop, it's the highest volcanic waterfall in the world and the source of China's Songhua River. The water here is famously pure. And the weather, famously changeable. And this is pretty amazing. Just a few seconds ago, we had a clear view of the waterfall, but now this cloud has come out of nowhere and just descended upon the area in a matter of seconds. It's pretty magical to see. <laughs> the afternoon conditions are no longer so great for mountain climbing, but they are perfect for a bit of relaxation. So Wang Wang takes us somewhere where we can wind down after our busy day and rest our tired feet. With some help, that is, from a swarm of uh, tiny little creatures. Oh no, they're coming! <laughs> I think it's even more strange when you look down and you actually see what the feeling is, all these fish attacking, well... There are a range of indoor and outdoor springs to choose from. The volcanic minerals in the water are said to be good for the body. And laying back, looking up at the trees, well, it's pretty good for the mind too. Up next, we learn about the mystery of the Chiang Bai Shan Lake Monster, taste some delicious local cuisine, and try our best not to scare away a ginseng spirit.
In this episode of Travelogue, we journey to Chiang Bai Shan, the perpetually white mountain of China's northeast. Here we view the stunning volcanic lake Tian Chi, wander the lush trails of the forest, and are introduced to some local treasures, including some very cute tiger cubs. We've just arrived at the west side of Chiang Bai Sha. Now we're going to go up and get a different view of Tian Shi. But unlike in the north side, we're going to have to climb a few stairs. Well, more than a few. Take a look there. So we better get going. This morning, we're not the only ones keen to climb the 900 steps, and soon we see why.然后说有两条恶龙在这里兴风作浪我是你的弟弟 Mystery monster or not, there's something otherworldly about Tian Chi. It's considered sacred to both the ethnic Manchu and Korean people, and travelers have been coming to see its stunning waters for centuries. And the flower fields surrounding Tian Chi are equally worth visiting. Playful pause, it's time for some more serious business, finding some precious wild ginseng. Like other traditional hunters, Mr. Sun believes the ginseng, or bang chui as they call it, has its own spirit which gives it its curative properties. And because it's alive, it does its best not to be found. I don't know how helpful I'm going to be to me. <laughs> All these plants look so similar. Mm. Uh, finding wild ginseng is extremely wow. difficult. Mr. Sun started learning the craft when he was just 10 years old. <laughs> He's part of a small and exclusive group of experts who still harvest the ginseng in this way. <laughs> This is actually the bone of a bone of a deer, which is another animal which lo is local to this area. If you use a knife or a, a scissors, you um you risk breaking the roots, which are the most um, important part of the deer. The ginseng root is said to resemble a human body. Ah, this is the toe, Okay. So here is our precious, precious ginseng. Oh, just 28 grams. Well, to buy this, you'd better have about six to seven thousand quite handy in your pocket. So uh, very much worth all the hard work to find it, I think. Ginseng is considered a king among Chinese medicinal herbs. 
and Changbai Shan Jingseng is said to be the country's finest. Now we're just about to have dinner, but you won't believe the way we're going to get there. Check this out. Right, here we go. I'm going to get the chance to feel the wind in my hair. Well, we've done a lot of going up mountains. It's high time to go in the other direction. Go any faster? <laughs> well, it seems Changbai Shan is full of surprises. From the sensation of speed to the sensation of taste. Specifically, of Dongbei or Northeastern cuisine. This restaurant makes Dongbei dishes using ingredients from the surrounding forest. I expected it to be very soft, but actually it kind of has that texture of um, taro or potato on the outside. And inside it's quite, it has that potatoey kind of starchy kind of um, content. And it's wrapped in something very sweet, so it's very good. Mm, how sure. My first time tasting deer meat, so I'm not sure what it's going to be like, but here we go. Hmm. Now, these kind of spices are very common. Um, in the north, so that's a very familiar taste. The rest of it is very gamey. Um, kind of reminds me of eating kangaroo back home in Australia. Oh. Mm. Smoky. With dinner over, it's time for some evening entertainment. This performance takes audiences back in time to tell the story of Changbai Shan. Portrayed is the legend of the Jinseng spirit, the reign of the Qing dynasty, and the origin of the Manchu people. that show I enjoyed it it was like a colorful creation story and like many of the indigenous peoples around the world those who have lived in this area have always believed that every living thing has a spirit and should be respected and it also made me realize that Chang Bai Shan isn't just teeming with wildlife it's also full of stories of myths and legends and mystery up next I get schooled in golf by Chang Bai Shan's best become surrounded by a swarm of honeybees and get acquainted with some adorable furry friends. You know, 
I'm having breakfast in such a beautiful setting now. Where I'm sitting now is just in the back end of the Wonder Resort, and just in front of me, I can see this path that winds its way all the way up to the top of this mountain where you can get a beautiful view of the whole area. There are a lot of little walking paths up there and a lot of places where you can really take in the view of the mountain. And if I go just on the other side, I can walk in and wander throughout the village and there, there are some cafes, there are some stores where I can buy some local wares, where I can relax and get some local food as well. And I think more and more people in China are enjoying this kind of travel. It's not just going out and roughing it to see some exotic or spectacular place. People more and more are also allowing themselves just that opportunity to relax a little, to sit back and enjoy a little bit of luxury. And of course, there are a lot of things to do all throughout the year that are very active also. During the winter, it's very popular for people to come here for the skiing. And during the summer, well, golf is the sport of choice. And that is in fact where I'm heading next. So, if you excuse me, I hope you don't mind if I get this breakfast into my stomach so I have a lot of energy ready for the day. Golf King visitors have access to individual caddy services, as well as experienced instructors. Twenty-two degrees. 所以说很多南方的客人呢，都来到我们这边打球，比如广州啊、上海呀，或是北京的游客都过来打球。Now it's time for my lesson, and I don't really know how to play golf, and it shows. But I can be a fast learner. 漂亮，漂完美啊！ Lucky shot, and it seems my luck doesn't end there. 在长白山呢，有一千五百多种非常珍惜的动物。那么多。对呀，现在我带你去看东北虎。好啊。We're gonna get to see the Siberian tiger, the king of them all. The tiger is the top predator in these parts. We have a little male tiger. 好像有点怕我们。And while this little fella doesn't look like a king right now. One day, he will. Siberian tigers are the largest cats in the world. Unfortunately, they're critically endangered. Well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Even while I'm going to the bathroom, these baby tigers are adorable. And I feel like I've hit the jackpot getting this close. Changing out of my red jacket was a good tip from the zookeeper, because while it's my favorite color, <laughs> they hate it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can play with him at the moment. We're lucky because he's only three months and his teeth aren't too sharp. And he's still considered really a baby more than a tiger. At four months, their teeth are sharp enough and that means that they, they don't have the um, ability to keep um, sucking their mother's milk. So that's when things change. But already at three months, they're eating raw meat just a little bit every day. If we came one month later, we wouldn't be able to get to play too close to them or close to them at all, so I feel really, really lucky. Nowadays, it's rare to stumble upon tigers in the Chiang Bai Shan wilderness, but at this tiger reserve, you can safely see about a dozen of all ages. Now, to another local treasure, one visitors can't afford to leave without trying. Chiang Bai Shan honey. Katrina. Hi. This will be my first time. This is just to make sure that none of the bees get in and sting me in any awkward places. We'd seen honey cellars on the side of the road, but nothing like this. So I'm 
going to get my first taste of this fresh honey. I think my fingers are clean. Mmm. Very sweet. This after spinning, the honey looks more like the stuff I spread on my toast. And freshly harvested, it smells incredible. This is not a normal so this is a special type of um, wood that's only found in Chiang Kai-shan and it, you can't see the flower, it's only the smoke and the, the bees are usually very protective of the honey but with one whiff of these they, they leave straight away, they hate it, so it's good for us. Chiang he said I can taste it. So give it a tasting test. Very mm. mm. oh, it's... <笑>咱长白山的这个断水蜜在清朝的时候 Mr. Tsui attributes Chiang Bai Shan's unique honey to the natural surroundings and the local species of bee. During my visit to Mr. Tsui's apiary, I realized he wasn't only knowledgeable about honey, he also knew a lot about Chiang Bai Shan's environment. He and all the locals I met had one thing in common. They don't just live on Chiang Bai Shan and take from it, they work to preserve and protect it too. No wonder it remains such a haven for both visitors and residents. We're sadly at the end of our time here in Chiang Bai Shan, and although we've done so much, I somehow don't feel that exhausted. And I think it's because this place is so revitalizing, you know, the immediate impact of arriving in Chiang Bai Shan is strongly felt. It's like getting a big green hug. But what I've found over these past few days is that this is a place that keeps on giving. It doesn't stop there. It keeps on giving in terms of its environment, in terms of the people, and in terms of the stories. The thing about Chiang Bai Shan is, like its name suggests, there is something perpetual about it. It keeps on evolving, it keeps on changing. It's not so easy to describe, but definitely it's not so easy to forget. This has been Travelog. I'm Katrina Yu. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time.